my name is Ted Knutson. I'm CEO of StatsBomb, and it is amazing. Like, I cannot tell you how exciting it is to have so many people in this room, plenty of whom I have met via Zoom, including half of my own company. <laughs> um, also, many of you that we have seen either via customer success or uh, you know, plenty of new customers along the way. Um, we're really stoked to be here, and uh, it feels like a long two years since the last time we were here, when we put this on and we came here and, and thought, you know, we have no idea who's gonna show up, but it seems like a, a, the, the right time. Um, our company is, is based around research, around data, around analytics, and around producing new stuff and supporting those who do. So uh, we wanted to get together and, and do that the first time. Second time, we've got over 400 people here during the pandemic, which uh, I think speaks a lot to the growth of the industry, but also the, the growth and support that our company has. All right, let's see if we can get this rolling. So. Over the summer, I was lucky enough to, to take a road trip uh, up, to, up to Scotland to catch Sweden versus Ukraine. And I was talking to a friend of mine, and he was telling me about his mom. And uh, his mom was going back and forth regularly to France, but had never adopted a smartphone until a couple of years ago. And basically, um, she, was, she was resistant to technology. I think she had like the old school Nokia. You got a text, you know, by, a, by the number pad. And what he found was that she was completely amazed by the access that she had to GPS devices and maps, and also to Wikipedia and the boundless information on the internet. And if you think about it for a second, like I can't leave my house without access to GPS and maps now. I can't get anywhere. Like that's how much it's changed. And I'm old, so I used to travel with like a legit paper map everywhere. Um, and, and his mom was, was like, thought that this was absolutely incredible, and, and most of us do. And if, if you think about you know, what you would do without infinite information at your fingertips, right, it feels like you almost lost a limb. It's, it's terrifying in some ways. Um, we were talking, and it hit me that this is the same way I felt when I left my football job, and I didn't have access to all the tools and all the models. And it felt like you know, I, I no longer had my glasses and I couldn't see. And I was talking to a different friend who, who recently left uh, a job with a football club that has a huge amount of infrastructure. And she's taken on a new challenge, and it's incredibly exciting. But she told me, I feel like I've lost my superpowers. I said, that's it. That is it right there. You feel like you've lost your superpowers when you don't have access to data. You never want to go back once your eyes are open to the power of the insight and the inspiration around data. And what we found was that if StatsBomb does our job right, if we produce the tools and, and the right sort of insights, we can give every analyst that works with us a superpower. And that, that, that is our goal, that's our mission. So like that, that's us right there. We wanna give all of you superpowers and we never want you to leave. And thankfully, most of you don't. All right, so 2021 has been a huge year for us. And we, it doesn't seem like it necessarily, but you know, over the course of the year, we continue to produce more and more things, a lot of which you know, was stacked up from last year. There's a lot of work that went in during the pandemic that you wouldn't have necessarily seen, a lot of tech work behind the scenes. But thankfully, the rollouts have really started and they're gonna continue. Like the velocity of our releases have, has really picked up. So in March, we launched Stash Bomb 360. We'll talk about that a little bit, but it's contextual event data. And as far as I can tell, it's the only one of its kind in the industry. We also launched Scout 2.0. So that's our, our recruitment product inside of, of Stats Bomb IQ. In August, a little bit longer, like StatsBomb Live data and IQ came along. You'll see plenty of that around, like you can see demos of it. We'll talk a little bit about that in a bit. Uh, Onbound value in product is now there, so we've rolled that out into the data. That will be rolling into IQ as well. Uh, so October, we've got uh, expected pass model. Uh, that's actually secretly been released. Uh, it, it, it harkens back to what we did many, many years ago, and then we had to build rebuild everything off of our own data. There's also past clustering inside of there. So these, this is our data science like really starting to kick in. We have a great data science team. We're releasing more and more information out of, um, out of that team. And then later, November, yeah, November we'll be releasing uh, our defensive responsibility model. And then finally, I've been told, you know, and I, I'm not gonna hold the team to this, but we're looking to release uh, on-ball value in live product at the end of this year. So, this is a very busy year. Like you compare this to most of the, the, the companies that are competing with us, and I think that the, this is an excellent output for anybody. Uh, and, and, and we're happy with it, to be honest with you. So let's talk a little bit about some of the things that have gone in. Like 360 into StatsBomb IQ is a current project. Uh, 3,400 frames per match, showing location of players around the ball for every action. It's easier to use than tracking data. That was one of the important reasons why we, we went down this path. 
360 was a whole new data set to work with, though. So we had this question of like, what tools should we build? <clears throat> and, and who should we, we build it for? The, the first release that you can see over here is you know, the, the addition of the 360 event viewer. It's got a strong visual ethos, which is something that we have in all of our products. And uh, it allows you to see the context of every event uh, around the, the, the game. So 360 is in the process of going into IQ. That's one of our biggest focuses. Uh, IQ sort of velocity of releases is a, is a huge focus for us. We've increased the dev team uh, dramatically and we'll continue to increase that uh, along 360 and then along the data product. So, but it's grounded in football questions. Like that's, that's the point of it. Like we, we work for analysts, we work for media, we wanna provide you better information. So how much space is a player in? What options do they have? Where are their opponents? Uh, it's quite useful for set piece analysis, uh, sequence analysis as well, and we're working on, on getting the progressive passing through balls and uh, line breaking passes into the IQ product. So IQ is our flagship data pro um, sort of analysis tool. Uh, it's where we started uh, back when we were just a little bit of company in uh, 2017. IQ Tactics was released in 2019. Uh, gave all users flexible, easy to use access to event level granularity and analysis. So what's next is the important bit. So we've we talked to all of you guys. I, I mean, pretty much all of you. Uh, between customer success and between the analysis team, like we are engaging with customers every single day. And we listen to you. Like it used to be that we would direct you on what we thought you know, analysis should look like and how to do recruitment because we'd done it. Now you guys are so advanced that we're constantly asking you for feedback. Like what should be next? What are your pain points? What do you hate is my favorite question in the world. Uh, I, Will Kuntz is here and he's talking and I've, I've been asking him this question since like 2017. Will, what do you hate? Like how do we, how do we find something that we can fix? How do we work on it? So, that's what we've, we've done. We've talked to you guys. We're looking at enhanced workflows, more flexibility and repeatability. You want to be able to save things. You want to be able to share things. Your workflow looks like this. You don't want a thousand clicks. So we're working on you know, lessening the death of a thousand clicks. Uh, IQ is a premium recruitment tool. And IQ Scout was released earlier this year. It's our flagship tool. You build shortlists based on metrics. You filter by the metrics, you compare players, save and repeat workflows. This is all stuff that you're familiar with if you're in the product. If you're not, if you're here as a visitor, like, you know, come talk to our salespeople, they're all over the place. All right, so the future of recruitment in IQ, compare more players. Uh, we have, I think, 85 competitions that we collect right now. We'll be adding more. Uh, we collect, I think, seven women's competitions. I just talked to, to Vasa about getting access to the, the Dutch League video for next year. We're gonna collect the, the Dutch Women's League. We give that away to all of the teams in those leagues. So FAWSL, Bundesliga women, or Frauen, um, you know, women's leagues in Italy, United States, Spain, and France. We give that away, we give you a league for free, along with IQ. Uh, if you're not on that and you work for one of those teams, talk to us, right? we will do it right away. Anyway, the point here is that we collect a ton of different leagues. Uh, we're looking at enhanced player positioning detail that's adding in and custom reporting and custom metrics. So like this is complex. Like this is stuff that's hard to code, it's hard to develop. This is why we talk to you to see what you want. Uh, but it's certainly on the roadmap for, for the 2022 um, period. And uh, putting in more data science model integration, uh, 360 data insights, that's all on the list. So the data science guys, like we work, we do the work so our customers don't have to. Uh, it's a little de democratic, we want the four screen rovers to be able to use the same on-ball value that released to the top of the Champions League teams. Like, that's part of our mission. Uh, we're, as I said earlier, we're producing more models, so passing, uh, pressure-based stuff around 360, defensive responsibility, we'll talk about that in a second, uh, and, and also sort of like working on stacking, combining models to create better insight. So like, you know, you've got this perspective on this player, but you know, not all models are alike, and you make a lot of choices when you're doing the, the model development, and so this model says a slightly different thing. If you understand the combination of the two, maybe you come to slightly better conclusions around what a player's skill set is. All right, so this is what happens when you let the data scientists uh, sort of condense down what they're actually doing. <laughs> For those of you who wanna, wanna check on that uh, on the replay, um, basically it's a, it's, it's a discussion of the passing stuff that we're working on. We're also working on enhancing a lot of the visualization of passing inside of the product. Uh, you know, pass target location was something that we actually put intended target in the data back in 2018 because we built the passing models and we understood what the weaknesses are. Um, now we're enhancing that further uh, to look at potential targets and using some model perspective around that. Expected passing is an old, uh, sorry, an old concept that you know, we put in product way back in 2017, 
but had to rebuild it off the data set and off of a very large data set as well with all of the different pass elements that we added into the USPs like pass height, pass footedness, et cetera. And then uh, clustering is, is going to help uh, basically make analyzing and communicating different types of pass patterns a little bit easier. Uh, so that's something that we've actually talked a lot uh, about teams and build up and stuff like that. Hopefully it'll uh, just make the analyst job a little bit simpler. This is fun. Like, so this is really old. This is Tom's early work. Tom's our CTO, Tom Lawrence. And uh, these are sort of the defensive holes around patch. Like, I have always felt like patch is ours. Like, you might have seen you know, holes come into somebody else's product, but we're finally working on, on a detailed defensive uh, responsibility model. Like, that is, is on, nearly on the other side of data science. Like, they're doing a great job of getting stuff out there. So anyway, the point around this is that our data science team is now humming. Like, we're doing a lot of stuff. And the challenge is getting this stuff into a repeatable pipeline, making sure that you know, the models converge and produce regular information on a weekly basis. And then we get it into not only the data, but stats by IQ. And we are really ramping up that production. I want to tell you a little bit about StatsBomb Live. Uh, we didn't start with live data. And one of the reasons why is because we worked on the nerd side, like the really deep modeling side. And the nerd side cares about accuracy and precision. Uh, if, you, if you look around you or look inside of yourself, you probably really care about accuracy and precision inside of data. That's what StatsBomb data as a base data has produced. And we, because we can review sequences, hopefully we produce considerably better information than something that's collected live. Now the live data is much more concerned about latency. How quickly can we get you the information that is still correct, but oftentimes not as precise in exactitude as you would want when you're modeling across all these different leagues? So we started collecting it. Um, what we found was that everybody has like different remits that they're doing inside of the live. It's very condensed. You have very little time to not only do the analysis, but produce the analysis, communicate the analysis, and then sometimes you're trying to quickly turn around at full time as well. So we talked to different people across the industry about what they're doing in each of these phases. We've taken that on board. Speed and latency obviously is a huge matter. Quality and accuracy of data. It still matters that you get it right. Like it's not, it's not like you're sacrificing you know, all of the accuracy of the data, but if you're trying to do it fast, like these things are in competition with each other. Consistency with the offline data set. I think we're the only company in the world that collects both live and offline. And so we use that as a, as a double check for all of the information and as a quality insurance. Um, KPI is specific to each user and each match and need to quickly identify the unexpected. So that's, that's what most of the, the teams are doing. Like, show me what's weird, what's, what did we not expect, how do we use that data in order to inform our tactics, make some adjustments during the game. So our mandate for success was to separate live and offline. All data in our live data spec will exist in the offline data. We will retain stats bomb quality standards for offline data in live, and it has to be fast. Uh, in most cases, the fact that there was a shot is produced within seconds, but then the whole expected goals model behind it also comes around, and that's produced within two minutes. It's often much, much less, sometimes 30 seconds, but you know, there's a big model behind it in order to produce this more accurate information. The, cools have to, the tools have to be customizable, and now the tools are configurable by users and repeatable. So this is a different user set for the most part than what is happening on the behind the scenes, the big IQ uh, product. Live IQ is, uh, is, is a lot more sort of media visual friendly, and it's also like you know, reduced. We're trying to provide the information. So, but we do add some stats ball magic into it, and we produce live freeze frames for all players within the frame within two minutes. Um, and we have the most accurate live ex expected goals model. Uh, our goal is to make that replicatable uh, off the offline model so that those that are using it in the media products and in the analysis tools have the same sort of stats bomb quality and the ex expected goals that you're looking for. And as I said before, we're looking to add expected or uh, on-ball value into the product in December.
All right, so also in the integration space. So we've been doing a little bit of partnership, mostly with video on the SPG Match Tracker. They're here. Catapult would love to talk to you and tell you all about their product, and they've sponsored us, so we're, we're happy to tell you that that's a good idea. Um, no, we, they've, been, they've been great. Um, and in fact, many of you have pushed us to, to work with them, so their, their product is obviously quite good as well. And the Piero one is one that many of you might not know, but we've been using the live data and helping um, some of the broadcasters, including Discovery Sweden, integrate live data, StatsBomb live data, with their video analysis tools to be able to produce broadcast graphics. Uh, for those of you who are in the media space, like this is a big deal. And it's a big deal for this sport. It'd be a big deal for other sports as well. We are spending time to start to change what you see on the television or on the flat screen or on whatever device that you happen to watch football on. All right, live IQ match dashboard updates automatically. User decides which data metrics to display. Uh, we create different dashboards for yourself, your manager, et cetera. We're adding more widgets, and they include tables of metrics, race charts. We're now adding pass maps, heat maps, shop maps. Um, these are all things that come into the product. So one more big thing that we're doing this year. So we talked about all the stuff that we're releasing. Many of you won't care about this, but this is a big, big change for us. Uh, we're going to do a second sport. And it's going to be as good or better than anything we've produced before. Uh, we're spending a lot of time on the ground with the coaches to find out what their workflows look like. Sounds familiar. Talking to a lot of people in the space to learn about this, this different sport. Uh, we'll talk a lot more about that at Daryl Morey's Sloan Conference. Uh, I believe it happens at the start of March of 2022. But this is another big focus for us. And one of the cool parts is we're learning stuff about that sport and taking technology from that sport and bringing it into this sport. Uh, so you'll see some things flow backwards from doing new research. Uh, computer vision AI team are, are working hard on both sides of the sports. And uh, American football is a, is a fun future for us. All right, so this is the schedule today. This is one of the two rooms. Um, while we're here, I wanted to say thank you so much to Katie. Katie has done an amazing job. And uh, I remember how much work Charlotte and I, who's our chief operating officer, did a couple of years ago when we did this the first time. It has been blissful because Katie has handled almost everything. And our whole team is pitched in beside that. And uh, again, that tells you a lot about the StatsBomb crew. Like we, this would not exist without a lot of people's help, but Katie has been incredible at doing that. Simon Benoub, our, our marketing, chief marketing officer as well. So this is, I believe, this stage, right? This is this, this room. Is that correct? Yes? Yes, good. OK. Um, yeah, so this is this room. Um, We'll have Ian Graham in just a bit. We're, we're slightly delayed on that, but I've gone a little bit faster, I think. And then the research room schedule is here. I think everybody's got also pamphlets that show you, but for the people who are following online, you have a different schedule. We'll bounce back and forth a little bit. We have had some COVID-related difficulties in getting people here. Uh, you know, I apologize for not having people in the room. Uh, we can't overcome the government mandates around vaccinations and testing and everything around that. But um, we're delighted with who is coming on stage. I, I genuinely feel, having been involved in this industry for a long time, that we have the most amazing group of speakers on both sides, both the sort of public and professional facing, and also the research track is, is fantastic. I also want to thank our sponsors. So we've got Catapult here. We also have Metrica. Um, they're both here and present, happy to, to demo things. Uh, I think they're, they both have really interesting, compelling products, and we thank you for sponsoring our, our conference. It's incredible to be back here at Stanford Bridge. It's so, so good to see so many of you. I, I just I cannot tell you how excited I am to, to interact with everybody, to see the talks, and to just be present, and a whole bunch of people who are really smart and really driven, and it's, uh, it's awesome to be here.